feel like the title of this video is just like opening up the floodgates for the type of comments I absolutely hate. But um, I guess I'll start off this video by saying this. If you're going to weigh in on this, let's try to be constructive about it, right? I have said this in the past and I will say it again. Comments that are stupid, inane, vapid, vague shit, like, of course behavior's running out of ideas. Have you not been paying attention? Or, oh my god, behavior is actually shit at their job. They're so uncreative and lazy. Are not only unhelpful, they are non-starters, and uh, I think you're annoying if you comment that. So, that's where we're at on that one. Anyway, as of recording this video, there are over 300 perks and 70 plus characters in Dead by Daylight. Now, that is a fucking lot. There is no way in hell anyone can remember every single perk and every single character. You will always forget one. And... There's no way you can remember what each and every one of them do, which is kind of why I get annoyed whenever I make videos about a perk or, or, or um, not a perk, but like multiple perks um, or something like that. And then I mention an effect and I'm off by like a number or something. Like I'll say 16 seconds when the effect is actually 18 seconds and somebody will go into the comment section and fucking lose their goddamn minds because I got that wrong. Um, because, and I don't, I don't mean, oh, they go in the comment section, they correct me. I mean, they will like actually like question the validity of everything I have ever said because I got that one number wrong or I got an effect like slightly wrong, like surveillance. I never remember the, the difference between surveillance and Call of Brian. I know Call of Brian increases the, the, um, I know Call of Brian increases the speed at which it regresses. And I know that surveillance, I think, gives you a loud noise notification once it stops regressing or something to that effect. Um, but I can remember, I can never remember the, the, the true difference between the two of them um, and why you would run one over the other. Because the truth of the matter is, is that that is a lot of what we're going to be talking about today, which is mostly commonalities. Um, the problem with Dead by Daylight, and this is why I did an entire video called uh, Five New Status Effects, as well as did a video, um, I, it was called Seven New Survivor Perks, but in it, I also included three new survivor mechanics. Um, because the core of Dead by Daylight is very simplistic. And there's only so many different ways you can write Regress the Gen become undetectable, gain haste, gain haste, gain fucking haste. There's only so many ways that you can, you can, you can write these different effects and the different ways that those effects can be applied before one, they start having too much in common with other perks of the past and two, something inevitably overpowers another thing. I've spoken about this fairly recently with Unforeseen, the new unknown perk versus Trail of Torment. Now people have tried flailed almost to inform me that Trail of Torment actually isn't bad now because you have the potential to be undetectable for more than 30 seconds and you get alerted whenever the undetectable goes away that they've unregressed the gin. The better option is always going to be the guaranteed 30 second undetectable. And the reason for that is consistency. Yeah, you can potentially have 60 seconds of undetectable if you kick a gen that's almost completed with trail and they never touch it. But more than likely, your undetectable is going to last five seconds, maybe 10, depending on how long it takes another survivor to go to that gen. The truth of the matter is the most you'll ever see trail activate on a semi-regular basis is like 15 seconds. So it's just better. Unforeseen also has more synergies than Trail of Torment does. It has more opportunities to work in more builds. Um, it's, Trail of Torment just isn't a good perk anymore since Unforeseen came out. That is what I'm talking about when I say, uh, you know, that power creep, it ends up making a lot of stuff feel worthless. 
I can't think of any other examples off the top of my head besides that one right now, but there's been quite a few times where, oh, uh, here's a really good one. Um, why run Hangman's Trick when you can run Awakened Awareness? Hangman's Trick shows you the aura of survivors within like 10 meters of a scourge hook while you're carrying another survivor. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, okay, not needed. You could run Hangman's Trick or... You could run Awakened Awareness and just get aura reading within 20 meters of your position while carrying a survivor. Um, I have, I think I'm going to do, do you guys remember that old video I did that was like fixing five terrible perks? I think I'm going to do another one of those. Anyway, the point is, is because of the commonalities that people have been seeing, the question has been popping up is, is behavior running out of ideas? And I don't think they are. I think there's just a lot of limitations to the core gameplay that people don't fully recognize. There's also commonalities with killers. Um, and when I say commonalities, I don't mean like, I don't mean like, oh, this killer is just, you know, better, innately better than this killer. Though that is the point. I, I mean like, Brandon and I had this discussion on the pot, on the interview I did with him, but when Xenomorph came out, People were like, oh, that's just Demogorgon combined with Nemesis. I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I, I guess. But, you know, like Bran pointed out, Dead by Daylight is the only game where, the, the only, like, game where the community gives behavior shit for releasing killers or releasing characters with similar powers. Because in every other game, there's something called classifications or categories. I've actually spoken about this briefly in the past, and I might do like a full breakdown video on it one day. Um, but there's different categories of killers. Zoning-based killers, uh, range killers, chase killers, anti-loot killers, and stealth killers. Um, so there's five major categories, and then there's a bunch of subcategories. And those categories typically have overlap, like Chucky is an anti-loop stealth and chase killer. Um, Ghostface is, well, Ghostface is just stealth killer. But um, uh, Demogorgon is a, is, a, is a zoning killer and a chase killer. Um, just things like that are, uh, is basically how things are categorized. So it's very weird, at least in my opinion, to constantly be like, oh, well, this is too similar to this. So obviously behavior is running out of ideas. And while I personally think that the Xenomorph's power is kind of odd, like its tail attack is kind of odd... Um, I'm not really sure why they didn't include the acidic blood or the face huggers um, into the power, but what do I know? Um, at least they didn't give it a pounce, I guess. <laughs> While I agree that there are a lot of similarities and there is a lot of power creep that tends to happen in this game, I don't know if it's necessarily that behavior is running out of ideas or if it's that behavior is a little bit too scared to take risks. I was talking with my friend Bennett on the interview that he did with me one day, and I was like, you know behavior behavior plays things very safe like one of my biggest recent problems was the uh is the haste epidemic is what i'm calling it where behavior just kind of sees something that needs to be changed and they slap haste onto it and everybody including me is kind of getting really fucking tired of that and it's not that behavior is uncreative or that behavior just doesn't know to, what to do it's that that's the safest option is to just add haste because that is the most likely option that's going to, A, get the thing used, and B, not be an egregious problem. As long as they don't make it a permanent haste effect, like, uh, like paid for this, um, then yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. And that's part of the problem. That's why, honestly, even though the Twins rework was kind of shit, um, I'm not mad at them for it, because at the very least... They took a risk. They took a risk by trying something different. Sure, it didn't work, but I don't want behavior to be discouraged from that. So, behavior, if, if anybody from behavior watches these videos, I doubt they do, but if you do, take more risks and start thinking further outside the box. And honestly, look to the community for ideas. There's an entire subreddit dedicated to custom perks that you can take a look at. There are so many concept chapter concepts. I've done a couple here on the channel. Uh, other people have done it. Look to those for inspiration. 
I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't mind. I'm, I'm sure you, like you would have to like credit the creator, be like, hey, I found this from some jackass on Reddit. And uh, oh, I don't know. You could hire me for a concept. Create. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the point is, is that, um, you know, obviously when you when you take inspiration from the community, give the community credit, uh, give the community member who came up with it credit. Um, but most of us love giving you ideas. And I know it can be difficult to shift through the shit to find the diamonds, but there are some really good ideas out there. Like one time I saw this Redditor come up with an idea of a survivor could collect pallet fragments and then find a broken pallet. Um, so the fragments are still on the ground and then rebuild a pallet in a place, right? So if, if the killer broke five pallets, they could collect four fragments from four of the broken pallets. And then the last pallet that's broken that still has the fragments on the ground, they could rebuild from there. Um, that sounds like a really cool idea. And I think, you know, would it be useful? Probably not, but it would be cool and it could probably find a few strategic uses. Um, you know, so I think that's just something that you should probably start looking at if you're watching this. You're probably not, but that's the way that I, that's what I think. I don't think behavior is running out of ideas. I just think they like to play things a little bit too safe. And that's what's leading to a lot of what people feel is stale. But as always, I want to hear what you think. So let me know down in the comments down below. And as always, a great big special thank you to my channel members listed on screen now. If you want to find out how to become a channel member today, get awesome perks like seeing videos early, purchase count codes, and more, then please click that join button down below. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one.